Ricky is 11 and is severely autistic. He attends a special school in Bristol. Like many of the pupils, he has no usable speech and a limited understanding of the world around him. His teachers describe him as personable, but he can become withdrawn for long periods, lost in his own world, and communication with him can be difficult. They wonder if there's any way this can be overcome. Phoebe Caldwell has worked for over 30 years as a practitioner with people with severe learning difficulties and behavioural distress. She uses a method of communication known as intensive interaction to emotionally engage with them. She's come to work with Ricky to see if this method can help overcome the communication difficulties and isolation that his autism presents. Intentional interaction really is finding a way of using people's body language in order to uh, get into conversation with them. Uh, we are looking at all the things they do, all the behaviours, all the sounds they make, all the utterances, all the movements, and particularly the rhythms. And we tune into these in order to get what we call emotional engagement. What we're trying to do is we're trying to set up signals which the brain recognises um, and to shift their attention from what they are doing by themselves, from solitary self-stimulation to shared activities, something we can do together, um, so that what has been something they're doing on their own becomes interactive. Um, and this is the great bridge that one has to try and build. As well as working with Ricky, Phoebe is keen to show class teacher Claire Gates how to practice this method so she can use it on a regular basis. The few sessions shown in this programme give a snapshot of how communication can be developed in the long term. Show Jakey. What are these in here, Jake? Characteristics, you know, he really likes to engage with people. And his, um, the way that he's doing it at the moment is taking people to what he wants and touching yeah. very gently and guide, you know, letting everyone know what he wants by guiding them. But of course that is actually um, him learning to manipulate the world rather than to relate to it. It's Phoebe's first session with Ricky. She asks Claire to join in, getting her to consider the sounds that Ricky makes. It starts at the lowest level by um, just they're listening to their breathing rhythm. because the person will listen to their own breathing, they'll actually hear it. Mm. So it shifts the attention from the inner self-stimulation mm. to shared. Yeah. And so it, you, you actually see very often, you know, the, the surprise. Mm. Where did that come from? We're always trying to shift their attention from solitary self-stimulation mm -hmm. to a shared activity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you see that? His head came up immediately. He was, his, he was expecting you to do it with him. And you're trying to tune into any sort of emotional level. So, you know, if they're sh sort of shouting, ah, you might go, ah. So you're actually tuning into how they feel. When it's a distress, go, ah, ah. Ricky eventually turns round, beginning to show more of an interest in Phoebe and Claire. As well as being withdrawn, people with autism often display obsessional behaviours. For Ricky, this means sprinkling, running things like corn or gravel through his fingers. Phoebe wants to see how much Ricky will interact when he's sprinkling. It's his most obsessional behaviour, and he can do it for hours at a time if left undisturbed. We need to pick up on all the positive bits. And it really may be flapping their hands or flapping a bit of string or banging a bead or um, playing with rice or whatever and watching it dribble away. Although these are fixations, we are going to use them for communication. I think that he likes this so much because one of the things he does a lot is play with his fingers, with his hands, and he's actually giving himself a better version of that stimulus when he's playing with this. And so it gives him a sensation he's really happy with. Mm -hmm. 
So is there a danger of intensive interaction perpetuating these fixations? I don't think anybody who's used this has ever found that it actually reinforces their repetitive behaviour because what it does is it shifts their attention from that inner world to the world outside. That's mine, but, oh, it happened somewhere else. After a few minutes, Phoebe develops the interaction by sharing only one tray. Ricky seems to take this well, and his usually solitary sprinkling becomes a joint activity. As soon as you use, in, use their language, you'll get the eye contact, you get an, an increase in proximity, you get interest in, in what people are doing, you get emotional closeness. Can I have some more? Thank you. That's great. Now, would you put that? Oh! Hooray! Yeah. His parents, Gary and Debbie, treat Ricky as they would any child. But his obsession with sprinkling can be a problem, especially when they want to take him out. While he's, while he's sat sprinkling, it's almost like he goes in a trance and he's not aware of anything else around him other than this fixation on sprinkling thing. Like all children, Ricky likes sweets. Offering him a chocolate is usually one way to stop him sprinkling. Come on, are you gonna come in that bit? Nick? Don't think this is gonna work this time. Ricky knows there's no point sitting when Gary's around as his dad can lift him. When it's just me, he knows that I'm not gonna be strong enough to lift him to his feet and walk him in. What are you doing there, babe? He almost knows, you know, that we're <laughs> Can't be quick off the mark. What are we doing? Can we go in? You can have this for being good boy. <laughs> Come you on. just laugh. He, he doesn't want that, do you? Hey, he doesn't want that. Phoebe has come along for tea to see how Ricky interacts at home. She wants to see whether Debbie and Gary might be helped by using this method with him. The reason he's doing this is he's giving himself this very powerful self-stimulus for his um, sort of muscles and joints and so forth. Every time he gives himself a jerk, it helps him to know what he's doing. <laughs> While Ricky and Gary are on the trampoline, Debbie questions Phoebe about Ricky's behaviour and the nature of intensive interaction. Should we be discouraging him with the stimulation, the sprinkling and the... No, you can't. If you do that, you leave him vulnerable to all the things which he's actually finding very difficult to cope with. You actually need to work with it rather than against it. The things that they do on their own, you're trying to have fun with. You're um, setting up that uh, link, that interaction. And that relaxes him. Yes, it does. It really, really does. Following Phoebe's advice, Debbie has a go at using the technique with Ricky. It's the following day, and Ricky's back at school. Working with teaching assistant Tracy, he's capable of doing his classwork. Which ones are the same? Look in. Yeah, where does it go? Where does she go? Look in. Look. Good boy. Right then. Matching again. Now, where's the pineapple again? Good boy. Good boy. And the orange. Well done. The hustle and bustle of break time can overload Ricky's senses with sights and sounds that he finds hard to process and interpret. It's been described as fragmentation, when everything in the brain breaks up, um, where all the images break up and the sounds start booming. And it's like in the kaleidoscope, where the pattern never settles. What we're doing is putting in sounds or movements. We're putting in signals, rather like cat's eyes in the road, telling them where it's safe to go. After break, Phoebe and Claire begin another session of intensive interaction with him. 
What we're trying to do is make, give him the idea that every time he does something, he'll get an answer. got to be in the present. Otherwise, what you're saying to the child is I'm not listening to you. And it's that establishing that link that I will listen and value every single thing you say or do and all the rhythms that are important to you or all the themes that are important to you. I will listen to them all and I will respond to you. You can see their world expanding um, as they become more trusting and, and the brain becomes more relaxed. Uh. Okay. <laughs> It's really interesting the way that he retreats into his corner and thinks about what you've done. And... Well, they need to. They need to have time to take it on board. Mm -hmm. And it's what's called assimilation time. You know, they go in, they think about it, and then they come back. But yeah. He seeks you out again. Oh, that's right. Seeking you out now. <laughs> the intense interaction would be really brilliant to helping him engage and share and explore an activity with somebody else. So you get emotional engagement as opposed to just, I want this, I want this, I, this. I want that. We make mm. the distinction between functional communication yeah. and emotional engagement. Mm, exactly. And this is what intensive interaction yeah. really does. <laughs> People sometimes think, you know, it's magic and or miracle and so forth, and uh, that I'm the only person who could do it. This is absolutely not true. Uh, actually, you don't even have to be a real expert. We just have to learn to let go of our own agendas and to um, work off what the child is doing. But the most important thing we can do for people is to open up their lives so that they are open to relationship. Mm.